From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi, and welcome to this Cube Conversation. From our Boston area studio, I'm Stu Miniman. Happy to welcome to the program. First of all, we have a first time guest. Always love when we have a founder on the program. Anurag Goel is the founder and CEO of Render. And we brought along a longtime friend of the program, Dr. Steve Herod. He is a managing director at General Catalyst, a investor in Render. Anurag and Steve, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks, Stu. All right, so Anurag, Render, you know, you, you, your company, the, the tagline is the you know, easiest cloud for developers and startups. Uh, it's a rather bold statement. Uh, you know, most people feel that you know, the first generation of cloud uh, you know, has happened and there were certain clear winners there. Uh, you know, the hearts and minds of developers absolutely has been you know, a key thing for you know, many, many companies, you know, one of those drivers in, in the software world. Why don't you give us a little bit of you know, your background and you know, as, as the founder of the company, what was it, that, the opportunity that you saw that, that had you create Render? Yeah, uh, so I uh, was the uh, fifth engineer at Stripe and helped launch the company and grow it to $5 billion in revenue. Um, and uh, throughout that period, I saw just how much money we were spending on just hiring DevOps engineers. Um, AWS was a, a huge, huge management uh, headache, really. There's no other way to describe it. And even after I left Stripe, I was thinking hard about what I wanted to do next. And a lot of those ideas required some form of development and deployment and putting things in production. And every single time I had to do the same thing over and over and over again as a developer. So despite all the, the advancements in the cloud, uh, it was always repetitive work that not just, uh, uh, that wasn't just uh, for my projects. I think a lot of my friends felt the same way. And so I decided that we needed to automate some of these new things that have come about uh, as part of the regular application deployment process and how it evolves, and that's how Render was born. All right, so, so Steve, you know, remember in the early days, uh, you know, cloud was supposed to be, you know, easy and inexpensive. You know, I've been saying on theCUBE, it's like, well, I, I guess it hasn't quite turned out that way. Um, I'd love your viewpoint a little bit because uh, you, you've invested here uh, to really be competitive in the cloud. It's, you know, tens of billions of dollars a year uh, that need to go into this, right? Yeah, you know, it's a, I, I had the fortunate chance to meet Anurag early on. Uh, General Catalyst was an investor in Stripe, and so seeing what they did sort of spurred us to think about this. But I think we've talked about this before also on theCUBE. Um, even back long ago in the VMware days, we looked very seriously at buying Heroku, one of the early players, and still around, obviously, at, at Salesforce in this PaaS space. And, and every single infrastructure conversation I've had from the start, I have to like come back to myself and come back to everyone else and just say, you know, don't forget the only reason any infrastructure even exists is to run applications. And, and as we talked about the first generation of cloud, it was about let's make the infrastructure disappear and make it programmatic. But I think even that we're realizing from developers that is just still way too low of an abstraction level. You want to write code, you want to have it in, in you know, GitHub and you want to just press go and it should automatically deploy, automatically scale, automatically secure itself and just let the developer focus purely on the app. And, you know, that's an idea that people have been talking about for 20 years and, and should continue to talk about, but I really think with Render, we found a way to make it just super easy to deploy and run. And, uh, and, and certainly it is big players out there, but it really starts with developers loving the platform. And that's been Anurag's obsession since I met him. Yeah, it, it's interesting. You know, when I first was reading, I'm like, wait, you know, reminds me a lot of somebody like, say, DigitalOcean, you know, cloud for developers, or, you know, Steve, you've rewalked through, you know, the PaaS discussion, has gone through so many iterations. You know, what would containerization do for things? Or you know, serverless was you know from its name. I don't need to think about that underlying layer. Uh, Anurag, give us a little bit as to you know, you know, how should we think of Render? You know, you you are a cloud, but you know, you're not you're not so much. You know, you're not an infrastructure layer. Uh, you're not trying to compete against the laundry list uh, of features that an AWS, Azure, or Google have. 
Um, you're a little bit different than you know some of the previous PaaS layers, and and you're, and you're not serverless. So you know what what is render? <laughs> yeah, um, it is actually a new category that has come about because of the advent of containers and because of container orchestration tools and all of the surrounding technologies that make it possible for companies like Render um, to innovate on top of those things and provide experiences to our to developers uh, that are essentially serverless. So by serverless, you could mean one of two things or many things really, but uh, the way in which Render is serverless is you just don't have to think about servers. All you need to do is connect your code to GitHub and give render a quick start command for your server and a build command if needed. And we suggest a lot of those values ourselves. And then every push to your GitHub repo uh, deploys a new version of your service. And then um, if you wanted to check out pull requests, which is a way developers test out code before actually pushing it to deployment, um, every pull request ends up creating a new instance of your service um, and you can do everything from a single static site to really complex clusters of several microservices, as well as managed uh, Postgres, uh, things like clustered uh, Kafka and Elasticsearch. And really one way to think about Render is it is the, the platform that every company ends up building internally and spends a lot of time and money to build. And we're just doing it once for everyone and doing it right. And this is what we specialize in. So you don't have to. Yeah, just to add to that, if I could, Stu, what's, what's I think interesting is, uh, you know, we've had and talked about a lot of startups doing a lot of different things. And there's a huge amount of complexity to enable all this to work at scale and to make it work uh, with all the things you look for, whether it's storage or CDNs or um, metrics and alerting and monitoring. All of these little startups that we've gone through and big companies alike, um, if you can just hide that entirely from the developer and just make it super easy to use and deploy, you know, that's been the, the, the mission that Anurag's been on the start. And as you, as you hear from some of the early customers and how they're increasing the usage, it's, it's just that love of making it simple that is key in this space. All right, yeah, Anurag, maybe it would really help illustrate things if you could talk a little bit about some of your, your early customers uh, their use case, and you know, give, give us give us what stats you can about how your company's growing. Certainly. Uh, so one of our more prominent customers um, was the Pete Buttigieg campaign, um, which ran through you know most of 2019 and uh, and through the first couple of months of 2020. And they moved to us from Google Cloud uh, because they just could not. Uh, or did not want to deal with the complexity inherent in today's sort of standard infrastructure providers where you get a VM and then you have to figure out how to work with it or even um, manage Kubernetes. Actually, they're trying to run on managed Kubernetes on GKE and that was too complex or too much to manage for the little team. And so they moved uh, all of their infrastructure over to Render and uh, they, they were able to service, you know, billions of requests over the next few months uh, just on our platform. And every time um, Pete Buttigieg went on uh, stage during a debate and said, uh, oh, go to PeteForAmerica.com, there's a huge spike in traffic on our platform um, and uh, it scaled with, with every debate. And, and so that's just one example of where uh, really high quality engineering teams are saying, no, this stuff is too complex, it doesn't need to be. And there is a simpler alternative and Render is filling in that gap. Uh, we also have uh, customers all over from, uh, you know, single indie hackers who are just building out their new project ideas to uh, late stage companies like uh, Stripe, where uh, we are making sure that we scale with our users and we give them uh, the things that they would need without them having to mature into AWS or grow into AWS. Um, I think render is built for the entire life cycle um, of a company, which is you start off really easy and then you grow with us. And, and that is what we're seeing with Render where a lot of customers are starting out simple and then continuing to grow their usage and their traffic with us. Yeah, I, I was doing some research, uh, get, getting ready for this on Arag. I saw, you know, it's it, it not necessarily, you're saying that you're cheaper, uh, but there, there are some times that, you know, price, can help, uh, performance uh, can be better. 
uh, if I was, you know, a Heroku customer uh, or an AWS customer, uh, I, I guess m what might be some of the reasons that I'd be considering right now? So for Heroku, I think the comparison, of course, it, there is there are there's a big difference in price because uh, we think Heroku is significantly overpriced because they have a perpetual free tier, and so their paid customers end up footing the bill for that. Um, we don't have a perpetual free tier that way. We make sure that our paid customers pay what's fair. Uh, but more importantly, we have uh, features that just haven't been available in any platform as a service until now. For example, uh, you cannot spin up persistent storage, block storage in Heroku. You cannot set up private networking in Heroku as a developer unless you pay for some like crazy enterprise tier, which is you know $3,000 a month. Um, and Render just builds all of that into the platform out of the box. And when it comes to AWS, Again, there's no comparison in terms of ease of use. We'll never be uh, cheaper than AWS. That's not our goal either. It's our goal to make sure that you never have to deal with the complexity of AWS while still giving you all the functionality that you would need from AWS. And when you think about uh, applications as applications and services, as opposed to uh, applications that are running on servers, that's where Render makes it much easier for developers and development teams to say, look, we don't actually need to hire hundreds of DevOps people. Uh, we can we can significantly reduce our DevOps team and the existing DevOps team that we have can focus on application level concerns like performance. All right, so Steve, I guess a couple questions for you. Number one is we haven't talked about security yet, which I know is a topic near and dear to your heart. Uh, you know, was one of the early concerns about cloud, but now often is a driver to, to move to cloud. Um, give us the, the security angle uh, for this space. Yeah, I mean, the key thing uh, in, in all of this space is to, to get rid of the complexity and complexity and human error is often, as we've talked about, you know, that is the number one security problem. So by, uh, by taking this fresh approach, that's all about just the application and, uh, and a very simple GitOps based uh, workflow for it. You're not going to have the human error that typically has misconfigured things and in coming into there. I think more broadly, the, the overall notion of this serverless world has also been a very, a very nice move forward for security. Um, if you're only bringing up and, and taking down the pieces of the application as needed, they're not there to be hacked or attacked. So I think for those two reasons, this is really a, a more modern way of looking at it. And, and again, I think we've talked about many times, security is the bane of DevOps. It's the, the slowest part of any deployment. And the more we get rid of that, the more the extra value proposition comes safer and also faster to deploy. Yeah, uh, the, the question I'd like to hear both of you is the, the role of the developer has changed an awful lot. Uh, you know, five years ago, if, you, if I talked to companies and they were trying to be, bring, you know, DevOps to the enterprise or anything like that, it, it seemed like they were doomed. But, you know, things have matured. We, we all understand how important the developer is. And, and it feels like that, that line between the infrastructure team and the developer team is, is starting to move, or at least I have tools and communication happening between them. Uh, I, I'd love, you know, maybe Steve, if you can give us a little bit your macro view on it, and Anurag, you know, wh wh where that plays uh, for render too. Yeah, and Anurag, especially be able to go into our existing customers. You know, th what I love about render, this is a completely f sort of clean sheet approach to thinking about get rid of infrastructure, just make it all go away and have it be purely there for the developers. Certainly the infrastructure people need to audit and make sure that you're passing the certifications and make sure that it has acceptable security and data retention and all those other pieces. But that becomes Anurag's problem, not the developer problem. And so that's really how you look at it. Um, the second thing I've seen across all these startups, you don't typically have, especially, you're not talking about startups, but mid-sized companies and above, they don't convert all the way to DevOps. You typically have people peeling off individual projects and trying to move faster and, and use some new approach for those. And then as those hopefully go successful, more and more of the existing projects will begin to move over there. And so what Render's been doing and what we've been hoping from the start is, let's attract some of the key developers and key new projects, and then word will spread within the companies from there. But so the, the answer in, in a lot of these companies, make developers love you and make the infrastructure team at least support you. Yeah, and um, that was a really good point about uh, developers uh, and infrastructure DevOps people, the line between them sort of thinning and, and becoming more of a gray area. I think that's absolutely right. I think the developers uh, want to continue to think about code, uh, but then 
in today's environment outside of render, when we see things like AWS and things like um, uh, DigitalOcean, you still see developers struggling. Um, and in some ways, render is making it easy for smaller companies and developers and startups uh, to use the same best practices that a fully fledged DevOps team would give them. And then for larger companies, again, it makes it much easier for them to focus their efforts on uh, business development and making sure they're building features for their users and making their apps sort of more secure outside of the infrastructure realm and uh, not spending as much time just you know, hurting servers and making those servers more secure. To give you an example, uh, renders machines aren't even accessible from the public internet where, where our workloads run. So there's no firewall to configure really for your app. There's uh, no DMZ, there's no VPN. Um, and then when you want to make sure that you're just, uh, uh, you want a private network, that's just built into render along with service discovery. All your services are visible to each other, but not to anyone else. And just setting those things up on something like AWS and then managing it on an ongoing basis is a huge, huge, huge cost in terms of resources um, and, and people. All right, so Anurag, you just opened uh, your, your first region in Europe, Frankfurt, if I remember right. Uh, give That's us a little right. bit as to the, the, what growth we should expect, you know, what you're seeing um, and, and how you're going to be expanding your services. Yeah, so uh, the expansion to Europe was by far our most requested feature. We had a lot of, um, European users using Render, even though our servers were until now based in the US. Uh, in fact, one of, uh, or perhaps the largest uh, recipe sharing site in Italy was using Render, even though the servers were in the US and all their users were in Italy. Uh, and when we moved to Europe, uh, that was like this, you know, it was Christmas come early for them. Um, and they started, uh, they just started moving over things to, to our European region. But that's, that's just uh, uh, the start, right? We have to make sure that we make compute as accessible to everyone, not just in, in the US or Europe, but also in other places. So we're looking forward to expanding in Asia, to expanding in uh, South America, and even Africa. And our goal is to make sure that you, your applications can run in a way that is uh, completely uh, uh, transparent to where sort of they're running. And you can even say, look, I just want my application to run in um, these four regions across the globe. You figure out how to do it, and we will. And that's really the sort of dream that a lot of uh, platforms as a service have been selling, but haven't been able to deliver yet. And I think, again, render is sort of this at this point in time where uh, we can work on those um, uh, crazy, crazy dreams that we've been selling all along and actually make them happen for companies that have been burned by platforms as a service before. Yeah, I, I guess it brings up a, a question. You talk about platforms and one, one of the original ideas of PaaS and one of the promises of containerization was I should be able to focus on my code and not think about where it lives. But part of that was if I need to be able to run it somewhere else or want to be able to move it somewhere else that I can. So that whole discussion of portability, uh, you know, in the Kubernetes space, it, it definitely is something that gets talked quite a bit about. Um, and, you know, can I move my code? So wh where does multi-cloud, you know, fit into your customers' environments on Arag? And, you know, is it once they come on to render, they're happy and it's easy and they're just doing it? or? You know, are, are there things that they develop on render and then run somewhere else also, maybe for a region that you don't have? How, how does multi-cloud fit into your customer's world? That's a great question. And I think that multi-cloud is a reality that will continue to exist and just grow over time because not every cloud provider can give you every possible service you can think of, obviously. And so we have customers who are using, say, Redshift on AWS but they still want to run their compute workloads on render. And uh, as a result, they, they connect to AWS from their services running on render. Uh, the other thing to uh, point out here is that render does not force you into a specific paradigm of programming. So you can take your existing apps that have been containerized or not, and just run them as is on render. And then if you don't like render for whatever reason, uh, you can take them away without really changing anything in your app and run them somewhere else. Now, obviously, you'll have to build out all the other things that Render gives you out of the box, uh, but we don't lock you in 
by forcing you to program in a way that, for example, AWS Lambda does. Um, and uh, w when it comes to the future, multi-cloud, I think render will continue to run in all the major clouds as well as our own data centers and make sure that our customers can run the appropriate workloads wherever they are uh, as, and as well as connect to them from the render services really easily. Excellent. And maybe I'll All make right. one more point if I could, Stu, which is um, I, one thing I've been excited to watch is the uh, in any of these platform as a services, you can't do everything yourself. So you, you want the open source package vendors and other folks to really buy into this platform too. And one exciting thing we've seen at Render is a lot of the big open source packages are saying, boy, it'd be easier for our customers to use our open source if we were running on Render. And so this ecosystem and this set of packages that you can use will just be easier and easier over time. And I think that's going to lead to, you know, at the end of the day, people would like to be able to move their applications and have it run anywhere. And I think by having those services here, ultimately they're going to deploy to AWS or Google or somewhere else. But um, it is really the right abstraction layer for letting people build the app they want uh, that's going to be future-proof. Excellent. Well, Steve and Anurag, thank you so much for the update. Great to hear about Render. Look forward to hearing more updates in the future. Thank you, Stu. Thanks, Stu. Good to talk to you. All right. And stay tuned. Lots more coverage. If you go to thecube.net, you can see all of the events that we're doing with remote coverage, as well as the back catalog of what we've done. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching The Cube.